most welcome to Historia Spanerna, History Connaissance, and the 240mm howitzer, America's biggest gun in Korea. This time we look down the barrel of a massive piece of ordnance, the Black Dragon, or officially the US Army towed 240mm howitzer M1. It was designed to replace the World War I era 240mm howitzer model 1918, which was based on the 1911 French design and was outdated by World War II. The project to replace the M1918 began in 1941, and by 1945, 315 of the M1 howitzer had been produced. It was the most powerful weapon deployed by US field artillery units during World War II, except for naval ordnance adapted into railway guns. And it was able to fire a 360-pound high-explosive projectile 25,000 yards. The weapon addressed a requirement for super-heavy field artillery, capable of attacking heavily reinforced targets, like those likely to be found along Germany's Siegfried Line. But this story is about the 240s comeback in the Korean War, so stay with us for this extra-large caliber narrative. And please, subscribe to our channel and join us on our journey in history. The same necessity appeared in the Korean War, when sometimes not even these 155s were sufficient to deal with deep bunkers and fortifications built by the Chinese. So, 12 240mm M1 houses were brought out of mass balls and sent to the front lines to deal with the objects that could not be effectively attacked by the smaller artillery weapons than on hand. These howitzers were utilized in two units in Korea, the US 213th and 159th Field Artillery Battalions, and it's the 213th that we see firing their gun in the images that follow. The unit was organized in southern Utah. The battalion played a crucial role in battles like one at Kapyong, where it earned a presidential unit citation. The unit is also known as the Triple Deuce, and it's celebrated for its courage and resilience, with every original member returning home alive after the Korean War. The 240mm Howitzer M1 was a massive towed artillery piece, requiring cranes, prime movers, and a crew of 14 to 20 men to operate. Its assembly followed the strict field manual based procedure. Site preparation, unloading and positioning of the carriage, stabilizing the carriage, assembling cradle and recall system, installing the gun tube, securing mechanical linkages, attaching elevation and traversing gear, installing sighting and fire control equipment, final checks and ready for fire. The weapons went into action on May 1st, 1953. On that day, the first round was fired by a Baker battery of the 213th at a target on top of a hill called a Donut by aerial observers. The first round was supposed to be just a ceremonial shot, however, it struck an ammo dump directly on top of the donut, which set off a chain reaction and blew part of the top of the hill off in a spectacular fashion. In May 1951, after a month of combat, the 213th was moved to support an offensive led by the 24th Infantry Division. As the infantry advanced, artillery units like the 213th were left exposed. On the night of May 26, over 4,000 Chinese troops turned back to escape encirclement, heading straight for the 213th. In the early hours of May 27th, enemy forces attacked headquarters battery and battery A. They outnumbered artillerymen, quickly set up defenses, and held their ground through fierce, often hand-to-hand -hand combat. Despite the odds, they killed over 100 enemy soldiers and wounded 200, with no major losses of their own. Lieutenant Colonel Frank Daly said, they got within 20 feet of the battalion's switchboard. At dawn, A Battery and HQ launched a counterattack, using a self-propelled gun like a tank. 
They cleared enemy positions in a canyon with machine gun fire and heavy artillery, forcing many Chinese to surrender. The battle ended with 831 enemy captured and hundreds of enemy casualties. Captain Ray Cox, who led the patrol, received the Silver Star and the 213th earned a distinguished unit citation. Utah lawmakers later praised her actions as a supreme display of patriotism and service. The 213th remained active in Korea until October 29, 1954. That's all folks. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.